demand uh, that we have concerning African American history. It was conceived by African Americans. It has been designed by African Americans. All of the exhibits you see, while we got other help in it, they were able to come and put and have it the way we wanted it, saying what we wanted to say, and saying it in the spirit we wanted to say it. And I see our mayor has arrived. All right, now. And before I go and tell you anything else about the center, uh, Mayor and this First Lady of Tuskegee. All right, now. of Mrs. Rosa Hart, born right, right, right here in Tuskegee, right, right, right. Alabama. And so I am, it is just such a great honor on behalf of our city government, on behalf of all of the citizens of our city, of course, uh, our first lady, uh, wherever she is, <laughs> <laughs> one, one, of, one of your your former presidents, our chairs of the Judicial Council. Uh, but I'm just so honored to have all of you here. Now, um, uh, I, Fred didn't tell me how many keys to bring. <laughs> <laughs> so, so being a politician with the power vested in me, I declare that all of you are now honorary citizens of Tuskegee, Alabama. You don't have to pay, you have all of the privileges, you don't have to pay any taxes <laughs> the first year. <laughs> but seriously, uh, since it was the National Bar Association that really, I guess, got all of it started, uh, because uh, Madam President, the first president of the ABA, wow, isn't that something to give up? <laughs> the Judicial Council. Is he here? Yes. yes. Come on. Yes. 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 All I know is that Leonard throws a mean party because George <laughs> let him use her sweet to throw his election party. <laughs> so we were picking up our bottles all evening. <laughs> no, judges don't do <laughs> But uh, I'm just so honored uh, to welcome all of you here, and uh, I want to uh, ask the First Lady if she would uh, welcome as well. Go ahead. Oh, okay. you talk. You talk. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just delighted. Yeah, I'm delighted to be with my husband here. We have a home in Cambridge, Massachusetts, but during the winter, we're mainly here. <laughs> and it's so good to see Fred. I saw you on the news today. Yeah. Give him another hand, Fred. Yeah. presidents. I'm proud of the men too. <laughs> I'm really proud of the women presidents. So everybody knows who the women presidents are. Okay. Any more judicial council people in here? Shall we? 
But and, and, but I'm so happy to see all of you, and I'm sure you're going to have a wonderful, informative, educational tour of our wonderful state. Outstanding. And the First Lady of Prince, First Lady Carol, give her a round of applause. Right. So, you know, we are here to com commemorate 60 years of the Montgomery bus boycott movement. But at the same time that the movement was ongoing in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, as a boy, those of us who grew up in this city, we were... Uh, Elaine yes. had the same struggle going on right here in Tuskegee, mm -hmm. an economic boycott mm -hmm. because the white folk who were in power gerrymandered the city limits. And that case, go million versus life. Oh, Give uh -huh. Attorney Fred Gray another round of applause. Right. And so they were fighting the effort to integrate the buses. Uh, in Montgomery, here in Tuskegee, we were fighting for our voting rights. Uh, and of course, those struggles were ongoing. Dr. C.G. Gomillion and Dr. Martin Luther King and Fred Gray and Dr. E.D. Nixon, and I'm so happy that he's being recognized tonight, too. Where are you, Michael? Uh, movie star, give him a hand. <laughs> What I want to do today is not only thank you for coming, Your Honor, and all of you honorable persons to commemorate and to celebrate 60 years, but I'm also here to challenge you. We have our voting rights being violated 60 years later, right here in Tuskegee, Alabama. And the greatest testimony, as I said today, uh, in an interview that I could give to Fred Gray. He was fighting for our voting rights and civil rights and equal rights 60 years ago, but he's also still fighting for our rights because today the Attorney General of the state of Alabama is violating our voting rights. He has closed our largest casino uh, that created more than 2,000 jobs and millions of dollars for our people for our schools, for our city, and for our county. And yes, we filed a lawsuit against the Attorney General of this state and the Governor of this state in the federal court. And I want to thank the National Bar Association, uh, Mr. President, because uh, two years ago the bar went on record in support of that lawsuit. And Attorney Fred Gray and Donald LaRoche, wait, give him a hand, he's not here. Association came forth. We didn't have a penny to pay him, didn't have a penny to pay Attorney Gray, but they put hundreds of hours into this lawsuit. And I want you to know that we couldn't get to first base. Uh, I love President Obama. He's my brother and he's my president, but we couldn't get to first base with Eric Holder as Attorney General. I'm so glad we've got an African-American woman oh as Attorney General. Oh I think our chances are going to be much greater. So we are going to ask the National Bar Association to join with us in filing, if necessary, another lawsuit in the federal court because we have an attorney general who has defied the will of the governor of the state of Alabama, the circuit judge Sashik. He has defied his order. And this Attorney General thinks that he is above the law. And I have already met with the U.S. Attorney who wanted to help us the last time, but he was stopped uh, by the Attorney General's office in Washington under the last Attorney General. And so we have requested his help. We need your help, National Bar Association. You were not here 60 years ago, but you are here now. 
Wouldn't it be a great thing to have the National Bar Association and the NAACP All right now. join with the rest of us as we do what we can to fight for the voting rights, the civil rights, and the economic rights, and particularly under uh, the Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution, the 14th Amendment, that right we feel has been violated. And so we are prepared to go to court. Come on around here, Mr. President. It is, it is with my honor. Uh, I present to you, and I have one made up for the rest of them, uh, a key to the city of Tuskegee, Alabama. Put it, put your hands together. You are now an honorary mayor for life of Tuskegee, Alabama. We have, we have one coming for you, Madam President, and all the rest of you. <laughs> so, Fred, back to you. Mr. Attorney, yes. I rise for a point of personal privilege. I am Elaine C. Harrington, a former member of the National Board of the NAACP, and I am just delighted this evening to announce that the Tuskegee-Macon County branch of NAACP has unanimously nominated attorney Fred D. Gray to receive the highest award, that is the Spingarn Award. I want you to take these because you have work to do to get him duly elected yes. to serve in this. There's nobody else who can take the prince place of Fred D. Green. Let's hear it for Attorney Fred Green. Let me let these two presidents say a word, and then I'll tell you a little something about the history of Sonna and let you go ahead and look and see it. It's hard. I'm from the South. So I, I, know, I, I understand, I understand, but you know, you know that's that age before. <laughs> 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 I'll say another word. <laughs> <laughs> now, I uh, couldn't be more delighted. Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. Uh, to accept this key to your great city, I remember over 25 years ago, you came to Florida State University when I was a 19 year old <laughs> uh -huh. sophomore <laughs> at Martin Luther King, and you gave a phenomenal speech to me and the mostly white children at Florida State University. And I, I never forget what you said as a little boy, what drove you as you sat and looked at the city park that said it must be a bad man to keep the black children out of that park. It's going to be a better man to let all the children go into the park. Mayor Johnny Ford. And I certainly too Madam President, we'll say a few words about this legal giant who we all stand on his shoulders. Yes. But before I do that, I would like to take uh, a few presidential privileges to acknowledge uh, my executive members of the National Bar Association who are present with us this evening. I see Vice President Carlos Moore. Kevin Judd was here. I think he's still working, getting ready for tomorrow. Uh, let's give him a round of applause in this afternoon. Our chair, Judge Alexander, our judicial counsel, great Omega man from <laughs> Brother right, Gray, from now. Chicago, <laughs> Judge Murray. Right, uh, and, and I certainly have to thank, and I know. Uh, my mentor, Fred Gray, and I, when we started thinking of this, two people really turned our vision into reality, and that is 
his daughter Deborah. Yes. Is Deborah here? Let's give her a round of applause. the manager and director and really is responsible for this whole thing. She right. came and started it with nothing but <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And, and certainly our chief of operations, Twanda Turner Hawkins. And so many of the NBA members, uh, they're too numerous to name, made this a reality, and it's already, day one has been incredible. And if this is indication, an indication, day two, for all the world to see tomorrow, because we have 67 and counting national media, I think we got NBC, CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, Washington Post, USA, everybody's going to be here tomorrow at the National Bar Association event commemorating the 60th anniversary of Fred Gray going in Ms. Joan Robinson's living room and strategizing <laughs> with Rosa Parks and to introduce the modern civil rights movement. I can't say enough about Fred Gray. You know, Mr. Gray, and I, I wish Deborah was here, maybe Carol, no. I, I think it was about two years ago we were here with the CNN. Yeah, Mr. Bell, they came down and we did a documentary and it was uh, kind of profound. They were comparing, you know, Emmett Till to Trayvon Martin and all these legal battles and so forth, and we spent today in this facility, and the mayor was kind enough to come by and share his thoughts. Mm -hmm. And what was so remarkable about that moment, Kim, I, I remember thinking that, you know, we were talking about Thurgood, we were talking about Mega Evers, we were talking about Rosa Parks, uh, Constant Motley, uh, so many of our civil rights giants who had left us on this side of the world, and yet a lot of their stories were not properly documented. Mm -hmm. But yet we had our own giant here in Macon County, Alabama, and Fred Gray. And I said, <coughs> what can we do as a national bar to make sure this is preserved and documented? And what is so profound is, <coughs> When I became president, he immediately pulled me to the side and he said, President Crump, would you do me the honor during your administration to commemorate the 60th anniversary of Rosa Parks by highlighting the role lawyers played in the civil rights movement? Because you may remember, Don, at that point, they had just come out with the movie Selma, mm -hmm. and we talked about that, mm -hmm. called that the Civil Rights uh, a documentary uh, with CNN. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting a bit because what Mr. Gray said to him, said, well, they just reduced the lawyer's role down to <laughs> a, a, a footnote. <laughs> and, uh, and so we said, we... <laughs> and so we said that we have to do something to let people know that the lawyers, really, it's the institutions of justice that leave the lasting change, and it was the lawyers that were strategizing to make these changes, and prayer said, we have to do something to document that, and we started thinking, and never did I imagine when we were talking in the back of that hotel in Los Angeles, and yet he, he, Don, we probably seen it. He started, everybody was putting it, he kept starting. We got to do this, we got to talk about that. this because we can't let this opportunity pass. Yeah, that's right. Call it, never did I imagine that we would be able to attract the attention of another attorney you all may know of, Hillary Rodham Clinton. <laughs> uh, and said, the next president of the United States. The next president of the United States. And, and another historical milestone, the first black woman to be president of the American Bar Association. We didn't know we were going to have all that 
history combined on one stage and that we would not only be able to document it, but tomorrow it would be highlighted for all America to bear witness of the great work that lawyers played in the civil rights movement. vision of Fred Gray. All right now. And it, there is nobody more worthy to get the Spring Guard Award right. than Fred Gray. All right now. And, and, and we were on the bus and I got a call from the White House and they were talking about what time it's going to be on because I think there is nobody more worthy to get the President's Medal of Freedom All right. than Fred Gray. Association, we are just humble mm -hmm. at this moment in history to be able to highlight our roles for our children in the past and in the future because what we're doing tomorrow really is trying to make it a better world, not just for black children, but white children and all our children. Because I think what Fred Gray and them did 60 years ago is more relevant now than ever mm -hmm. when we think about and uh, by directing their communications we were struggling because y'all know they started the trial in Baltimore today on Freddie Gray mm -hmm. yeah. and then you all know about the National Bar Judge uh, Hall what we're doing calling for the resignation of the police chief who did not fire the police officer after that horrible video mm -hmm. where he shot the boy one time, it put him on the ground, and he shot 15 more times. And you think about how they put little Junebug and Leroy in jail with no evidence. So now more than ever, we have to have equal justice for all America and all our children's future. And that's why we are coming to study the history lessons of what Fred Gray did. And so I say in conclusion, simply, Mr. Gray, thank you on behalf of the entire National Bar Association. All right. You know, you know we, I'm, I'm, I'm Monday morning quarterback, and I shouldn't have let him go first. <laughs> Because not only did you say what I was going to say, but you said part of what I was going to say tomorrow. <laughs> and, 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 and one of my biggest things that, that I wanted to say is, you know, I watched the Medal of Freedom presentations last week, and uh -huh. I'm like, where is Fred? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, where uh -huh. is Fred? Uh -huh. And yeah. so, um, um, Fred, I am, I am, I am living for this time next year mm -hmm. when you will be presented with the Medal of Freedom. I know it's going to happen. Yes. And so, you know, we all have to claim that. But I, I actually let Ben, I asked Ben to go first because this is a National Bar Association event. Yes. And while I am honored to be a past president of the National Bar Association, this is your program. It is your vision. It is Fred's vision. And I don't know that much should be a distraction to that. But I would like to thank the mayor. Uh, for being here, for having us in your glorious city, a city with so much history and uh, so much uh, city that we can learn so much from and from its people. Um, I'd like to thank all of the National Bar Association members and their friends and family and so forth who have traveled here to Alabama this week. This is really an important week. Uh, yes. It is the yes. 60th anniversary of the Montgomery bus boycott, and it is the 150th anniversary of the enactment of the 13th Amendment. Yes. All right, now. And, uh, and so, <laughs> if I could, without saying any, it distracting from this uh, historic moment, that we are going to Howard Law School on Wednesday evening. We're going to have a program in honor of. The ABA is sponsoring it, if you can imagine that. <laughs> um, uh, Amen. Um, yeah, how would it not and, and how would the right. law school? Yeah. 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 Uh, and, um, and because there's, there's so much history 
uh, that we need to really grasp and understand. And there's so much that we don't know and so much that we need to pass along to our children. And I think that if they knew some of this history, if we took the time to talk to our young people, that maybe we could in some way disrupt the school-to-prison pipeline. Yes. And so, you know, when, when we leave here after these two glorious days, I hope that we will carry forward all that we've learned and pass it down. I, I, I was talking to someone earlier today, and, and they were talking about the, the children in Alabama and how they can have some appreciation, but those of us who live in the North, there's some misconceived notion that we don't face the same issues that are faced in other parts of the country. And so our children seem to think that they are not subjected to certain things. We need to let them know. We need to let them know that they are no different, that when the rubber hits the road, they will be no different and exactly right. They will be the same color as the road and the rubber. <laughs> and, 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 and not only that, we have to share it with everyone. As Ben said, you know, it's, it's all about children we are concerned about. We're concerned about everyone in this nation because we want it to be a great place for all of us to live. And when you lift one boat, you lift all boats. And so we have to just really work hard, be more diligent, um, and ensuring that everyone is included, that everyone is afforded with every possible opportunity that there is available. It's not a matter of, I always say inclusion does not equal exclusion. We're not trying to exclude anybody, we're trying to bring everybody in to give them a fair chance. And so Fred, my friend, I, I, you know, anything you ask me to do will be somewhere. <laughs> I'm there. Because, because for so long, you were such an unsung hero. You wouldn't talk about yourself all the wonderful That's things right. that you had done. It's only been recent vintage that you would ever say. <laughs> and it took forever. Everybody was telling you to write the book, write the book. <laughs> and, 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 and so we are so pleased that, that it's been written and there's a new version of it. And uh, everybody, they got books in there for sale. So if you don't have it, uh, you should get it. But, you know, it's, I'm just so happy that we can stand here while you are still living and breathing. And I know she's somewhere, and, uh, 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 and all of our past presidents, we weren't called by name, but Kim Keenan, <laughs> Yvette Simmons, <laughs> Fred Gray, Mavis Thompson, past chair, Sheldon Hall, yeah. past chair, we have a past president, Ernestine Sapp, yeah. right now, this is council chair, Leonard Murray, who took me to his wonderful Boys and Girls Club in Chicago. Um, so thank you all for, for being here. Thank you so much for letting me say it. Before. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam President, past President Brown of the NBA. Uh, Allie Latimer, one of our great members uh, from Washington, D.C. She reminded me that this is the NBA's 90th anniversary, 1925, we were started in Des Moines, Iowa, and that as Fred Gray and Dr. Bailey educated us today, as we all know, it was uh, Booker T. Washington all right now. who helped form right. the National Negro Lawyers Association that right was called right. at that time that became the National Bar Association. Right so another told me, you got to thank the sponsors, Ben Crump, <laughs> <laughs> because we have uh, some wonderful refreshments upstairs, uh, and so I'm going to thank them, and we'll have uh, Past President Gray have the last word, and then we'll eat, drink, and be merry. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, we want to thank Honda Corporation. Uh, please give them a great round of applause. Past 
president said, would you all come forward and so we can see who you are. <laughs> all the high <laughs> We have Coca-Cola United, uh, our fraternity brother Walter Body is not present here, but they contributed uh, greatly to this call. So give them a round of applause. <laughs> uh, a law firm of Bradley Erich is any representative here. Uh, and they gave great <laughs> Lawyers Association. Oh, yeah. We got a representative past president. <laughs> uh, the Magic City Bar Association from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, and Vice President Carlos Moore contributed great support. My law partner Daryl is in trial. Parks and Crump gave a great <laughs> <laughs> And Green Spoon Martyr, past president Yvette Simmons. <laughs> Thank you. Did I leave anybody out, Okay. So I want to uh, bring Mr. Gray up. Also, I want to acknowledge Miriam Tolan. Uh, from Houston, Texas, who on her faith alone took a case all the way to the United States Supreme Court and got a unanimous decision, the first decision in over 20 years where the Supreme Court ruled against a police officer on qualified immunity. They give us a lot of credit, but it was that woman of faith who gets right. caught. Uh, we'll give it back to Brother Gray. All right, now. <laughs> There's several things, and I appreciate all these kind remarks, but what I was doing here is what other lawyers was doing all over the South, and many of them was doing it long before I was, and I'm just happy to have joined them. And even in my law practice, Ernestine Sapp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> McGowan, who is the mother of Walter McGowan, <laughs> and I want to thank uh, Hyundai because if I had not gotten a commitment from Mr. Brooks from Hyundai, even before I talked to the president, <laughs> I would never have talked to him. Because I knew if I told people in Alabama and made financial commitments. I didn't have any institutions like Troy and the Rosa Parks. I didn't have the state of Alabama. I didn't have any financial resources. So I had to have somebody who, if it worked, then we would at least be able to pay the bills because Fred Gray didn't want to have to go in his pocket and do it. But if I promised to do it, I would do it. So I want to thank them. Let's give them a hand. We have some, some board members who are here. Uh, all of our board members, uh, we have, I know several are here, Collins, uh, Walker, uh, Collins, Dr. Collins, uh, uh, Webb, who is the nephew of Joanne Robinson. You'll hear more about that tomorrow. Any other board members? And what about staff? Uh, uh, Where is... Uh, Coley and, 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 and Deborah. Those are the two. Deborah started, Coley came in and worked, and then he got an opportunity. And he took off the day from AEA to be with us today and tomorrow. Thank you very much for your help. Mr. Gray, can I, can I say to the NBA board members who are present, I see Gloria Johnson. Any other NBA board members, please raise your hand and be recognized. Yuri Lanita. Let me tell you one other thing, and that's what 
I tell you all the time. In addition to them sponsoring that, we, our law firm, does legal work behind it. Walter McGowan does it, and that's his mother over there. Wow. And so we just do it. Most of the work that's been done around here has been done, believe it or not, by African-American artists. One of the greatest one is here, Mr. McDonald. Where is he? Oh, he is right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. If he had done the piece on Mrs. Parks that's down there, it would look more likely than the one that's there. <laughs> <laughs> he is a real good artist, and we appreciate yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. And he did the bust of me over there. Awesome. Basically, let me tell you what this museum is about, and then I'm, I'm going to stop because I know there's, a, there's some active fr freshness up there, and then we have to get back to Montgomery. But when we started this out 15 years ago, and it was announced when the men were at the White House and President Clinton made an apology to the men, it was uh, Sherman Shaw who introduced, Herman Shaw, who introduced the President, said that we had formed the Tuskegee Human and Civil Rights Multicultural Center and for the purpose of having a memorial for them. And then he turned to the president and said, we want you to help build that memorial. <laughs> and the president got up and says, we're going to help you. <laughs> but you see, what the president didn't know is that Tuskegee University wanted a bioethics center. And he helped. As a matter of fact, they built a multi-million dollar bioethics center, so that's fine. But we didn't get angry about it. I simply went out, made speeches, had them to send money, and we were able to have this facility without any institutional support, without any consistent governmental support, and uh, without any consistent contribution by large corporations. But we welcome all. But it's here now. <laughs> we need their help now to keep the doors open. That's right. You won't have time tonight to see everything that's here. There are three basic missions of this center. One is to show the contributions made by the three ethnic groups that occupied the land. Native Americans, they came in, it was their land, and they made contributions. European Americans came in, drove them out, put them on reservations, brought in African Americans as slaves, so we have Native Americans, European Americans, and African Americans. We felt that if we could show the contributions made by each one, how each is built upon the other, then whatever problems we have now, we'd be able to do it. Normally, when you enter, you would go in the other side, and there are some wave walls around there, which will take you from the beginning of time and bring you all the way up to the present time. The second mission I've told you about is the memorial for the men in the study. Yeah. You are standing here under this wonderful chandelier and there are 623 names there. Those men, after I got as much money as the government would let us have, and after uh, we got the apology, they said they wanted this and I promised them if I live long enough we would have it. And so it is here. And behind here, that kiosk tells you about it. And on the real side of it, you can see and hear the entire proceedings before uh, at the East Room of the White House. Mm -hmm. Then the third mission is the civil rights aspect of it. And that's the area uh, back over here. Now, actually, this kiosk will show you cases from the beginning all the way up. And then the wall on the other side show you the major cases that have been filed and fought over here with the beginning of the voting rights cases in 1944. It was filed here by Thurgood Marshall and by uh, Arthur <coughs> Shores, who was my mentor from Birmingham. Those are the three missions of it. In addition to that, as they've indicated, 
when Booker T. Washington started the National Negro Business League, uh, there was a lawyer's committee because they could not then be members of NBA. ABA. I mean ABA. <laughs> so that committee, as a result of that, some of them heard about it and some who were part said, well, we need an organization of our own, somewhat like ABA. So it was from Booker T. Washington and his lawyers' committee of lawyers that the idea came about the establishment of the National Bond Association in 1925 in Des Moines, Iowa. And behind this, uh, yeah, I think it's on this one. Yeah. On this one is a kiosk on all of the presidents from the beginning of time up until the time it was erected, and I think that was about 2009. So all of you presidents since then, <laughs> you'll have to give us some money. <laughs> so much history here in Tuskegee, and I'm just sorry that you can't see it all, but I want you to at least look so you'll be able to come back. Sure. And we have a lot of little whistles and bells around here, and we even have something where you can take your, your cell phone and dial a number and pull out one of the drawers, and it'll tell you exactly what's there on all of this here civil rights stuff here. But we would not dare have you to come to Montgomery without coming over here because what Booker T. Washington did, and there was a time when it was Tuskegee on the campus was the only place you could have an integrated meeting without the fear of arrest. So we are happy to have you here. I think that's basically it. Uh, I know there are some things upstairs. Some of the staff people might want to tell us something else as to how are we going to do it? Anything else, anybody? Fred, yes. One announcement, Michael. Make your announcement about the E.D. Nixon event. Yes, this is coming Wednesday from 11 to 1 at the Layla Barlow Theater at the Alabama State University. Um, the E.D. Nixon Foundation will be hosting preserving the life and legacy of E.D. Nixon. Yes. So all are welcome. And when we celebrate that, we celebrate all the freedom fighters. The CLE. Yeah. the CLE tomorrow is sponsored by the Alabama Lawyers Association. And it'll be a continuation to get more good information like this. Yeah. So uh, that, I think basically that is it. You can uh, upstairs, and there are restroom facilities that are upstairs. There's an elevator here, and there are stairs over there. Is that it? That's it, sir. Okay, so just look around, see whatever you want, and there's some refreshments upstairs. Thank you. I think it's tremendous to reflect on what happened 60 years ago with attorney Fred Gray, Rosa Parks, Joanne Robinson, and others to strategize the legal fight to desegregate America through the Montgomery bus boycott. And as Fred Gray said, a lot of that the principals came from Tuskegee. Uh, Rosa Parks born in Tuskegee, Dr. E.D. Nixon, but that was the catalyst. That's what sparked the flame for the modern civil rights movement. And we still have so many lessons to learn from that movement. We also have to continue to make sure young people know why it's so relevant today when you look at Freddie Gray in Baltimore, Maryland. You look at Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. You look at Laquan McDonald in Chicago, Illinois. You remember Trayvon Martin in Sanford, Florida. You think about Jamal Clark in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Tamir Rice in Cleveland, Ohio. And it goes on and on. So now more than ever, we got to fight for equal rights for all our children. And that's what this is about. That's why the National Bar Association stands squarely in support of the 60th anniversary of the commemoration of Rosa Parks' courageous act and the strategic legal maneuvers made by Fred Gray and others thereafter to change the world. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh it is uh, 
an incredible experience, a wonderful opportunity to give back and to have uh, an opportunity to share experiences and to provide opportunities to other people and to pay it forward and to create a path for others to follow. Why do you think it's important that you were involved in the 60th anniversary? Why did you come? Other than because Fred told me to just do it. Because it, it, it really is important to recognize the lawyers who played a role in the civil rights movement. Not to take anything away from all of the great people who made so many sacrifices. But lawyers have been given a little short strip when it comes to uh, their contributions uh, that they made to the civil rights movement. And, and moreover, there's not much that you can do without lawyers. And lawyers don't, aren't given enough attention in general for all the great service that they provide a lot of them. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Okay. Okay. How are you?